Use Ampere's law to prove that the magnitude of the magnetic field due to a straight wire of length L and carrying current I at a distance R away is given by B equals mu naught I over 2 pi R. Let's remember that Ampere's law is the line integral over a closed loop of the magnetic field. And the result of that line integral over a closed loop is equal to the product of the permeability of free space times the current enclosed by that closed loop. Our goal for this problem is to show, using Ampere's law, that the magnitude of the magnetic field at a distance r away from a long current carrying wire is equal to mu naught over 2 pi r times the current in that wire. So this is how we're going to do it. Let's take a wire. So here's our wire, and we're going to say this wire is very long. What this means in practice is that the length of the wire is much greater than the distance at which we want to find the magnetic field for. Now this picture isn't going to be to scale, so I'm going to exaggerate R for clarity. R might be a distance like this, R away from our wire. Let's indicate the direction of the current in our wire is I, and we know from the right hand rule that this wire will, the, this, the current in this wire will produce magnetic field lines that are concentric circles centered about the wire. Now if we're interested in a distance R away from the wire, we only need to look at one of these circles about the wire. So this right here indicates the magnetic field line at a distance r away from the wire. Now from this diagram, we know that the magnetic field vector at that point will be tangent to our circle. So this magnetic field vector at that point will be equal to b vector. So our goal is to use Ampere's law to determine the magnitude of that magnetic field. Let's take a different vantage point. Let's look onto our wire from the end. So if we look onto our wire from the end, so if we look onto our wire from the end, the current is going straight away from us, which I'll represent by an X. The magnetic field line at a distance r is given by this, where the orientation is clockwise from the right-hand rule. So at any point on this circle of radius r, the magnetic field vector is tangent. And it looks like I drew this upper arrow in the wrong direction, so let me fix that. The upper arrow should be going clockwise. So the magnetic field at that point is clockwise. The magnetic field at this point is going straight down. This point straight to the left. At this point straight up. So we have the magnetic field a particular distance away from the wire. The vector is tangent at all points on this concentric circle, circle. So the magnetic field at this point is tangent at that point, tangent at this point, tangent at this point, and tangent at this point. Now, I drew these vectors approximately the same magnitude, but we don't know that yet. We're going to use Ampere's law to show what the magnitude is.
Now, this loop that I drew representing the magnetic field line, that is a convenient loop to use for Ampere's law. We're going to call that loop an Amperian loop. An Amperian loop doesn't have to be a physical um, loop in space. It doesn't have to be a physical curve. It is just a mathematical uh, representation of a curve in space. So when we set up Ampere's law, we need to know at least something about the magnetic field. What we know about the magnetic field is that the magnetic field's orientation is always tangent to this circle, and this circle is our Amperian loop. So that means we could rewrite Ampere's law. Well, let's write it like this. Ampere's law is the line integral of the dot product between the magnetic field and a small displacement of our loop, or a small segment of our loop, rather. Well, let's take a segment of loop, maybe right here. This segment we can call DL. And no matter where we are on this Empyrean circle, notice how DL is also tangent to the circle. Because I chose a shape that matches the symmetry of the magnetic field. Because I chose a shape that matched the symmetry of the magnetic field for our Empyrean loop, this is going to make the integration rather simple because we could represent the dot product using this alternative, alternative formulation of the dot product being the product of the magnitudes of the vectors times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. Well, our vectors are the magnetic field and the segment of our Empyrean loop DL. And notice how the angle between the magnetic field and DL at all points is equal to zero. So since that angle is equal to zero, we could say that the cosine of zero is equal to one. And remember, this line integral, according to Ampere's law, is equal to the product of the permeability of free space times the current enclosed by that Amperean loop, which is I. So this means that we have the integral of the magnetic field and our segment of line, or segment of our Amperean loop, is equal to mu naught I. Because the magnetic field depends on current and it depends on distance, and since on this Empyrean loop, every point on the loop is the same distance away from the current as every other point, we could surmise that the magnetic field is constant in magnitude. So this means we have the magnetic field times the integral of dl is equal to mu naught i. When we integrate dl, we just get l. And what is l? l is the total length of our Empyrean loop. And so in other words, the length of this Empyrean loop is just the circumference of a circle. So L is equal to 2 pi r. And that is equal to mu naught i. So we have b times 2 pi r is equal to mu naught i. And now we have our result for the magnetic field due to a long current carrying wire. The magnitude of the magnetic field is equal to mu naught i divided by 2 pi r 
as given to us by Ampere's law.